Hi, welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today we will be dealing with this topic called shock and its types. So what is shock? The definition says that it's a state in which decreased cardiac output or decreased effective circulating blood volume impairs tissue perfusion and leads to cellular hypoxia. Sounds complicated, right? Let's make it easy. What is cardiac output? It is the quantity of blood pumped into the iota each minute by the heart. What is effective circulating blood volume? This refers to the extracellular fluid that is within the vascular space and is effectively perfusing all the tissues. In simple words, shock is a state where the body tissues are getting less blood supply and oxygen due to decreased circulating blood available. Well, don't write this definition in the exams. Write the one which I have written in front of you. So what are the types of shock? The types are based on the cause. The first one is cardiogenic shock. So how is cardiogenic shock caused? This happens because of myocardial pump failure. And then it is not able to get more blood out of the heart. So there is low cardiac output. So the causes of myocardial pump failure are myocardial infarction, ventricular arrhythmia, etc. And many diseases that are affecting the heart mainly. Next we come to the second cause of shock. That is hypovolemic shock. The word itself tells you that there is less volume. So the mechanism is that there is low blood volume and hence there is decreased cardiac output. And what are the conditions that cause low blood volume? They are severe burns. In severe burns, the fluid is lost. As a result, the blood volume is less. Even in road traffic accidents, when there is massive hemorrhage, there is a lot of blood loss. So as a result, there is decreased effective circulating blood volume, decreased cardiac output. And hence the patient is in shock. The third type is shock associated with systemic inflammation. Systemic means the it's all throughout the body. It's also called a septic shock. So what is the mechanism in this? It's a little complicated, but don't worry. We'll deal more about this topic in the next video. In this type, basically when the microbes and all come in the vessels, there is release of inflammatory mediators by our innate immune cells. And that results in arterial vasodilatation, that is dilatation of blood vessels, as well as blood flows out, that is vascular leakage and venous blood pooling. So there is decreased blood in the circulation and that results in cellular hypoxia and metabolic derangements, organ dysfunction and if the cause is not removed, if it's persistently present, then it can lead to death also. So what are the conditions where which can cause septic shock, microbial infections, trauma, pancreatitis, among others. And what is the fourth type of shock? That is neurogenic shock. Neurogenic shock, there is sudden vasodilation. And that leads to decreased blood pressure. There is hypotension and finally tissue hypoperfusion. This happens in cases like spinal cord injury, anesthetic accidents and so on. The fifth type of shock is anaphylactic shock. The mechanism is similar to neurogenic shock, that is there will be acute vasodilation, fall in blood pressure and decreased blood supply to the tissues, that is tissue hypoperfusion. It is mainly caused because of IgE, that is immunoglobulin E mediated hypersensitivity to the drugs, bee sting or food. These are the five types of shock. And in order to understand, I think you should go back and watch it again. In the next video, we will explain the pathogenesis of septic shock. So do not worry, we will make it easy for you. This is Dr. Susan signing out until we meet in the next video.